Well, good morning everybody. Welcome. And uh, this is Tech Savvy number 6 and uh, today we're looking at Windows 10 and basic uh, things about Windows 10 uh, regarding the desktop, the tiles and the different settings that you can have uh, to enable Windows 10 to be more functional for the device that you're using. The first thing I need to tell you about particularly is that nobody explains why there are two types of desktop and um, or rather two versions of the desktop that you can see. Uh, the first version is to do with tablets and uh, when you load up the machine you might see lots of tiles or pictures across the screen and the reason for that is that Windows felt as they had mobile devices um, that they are using that it's good to move across to an icon Apple type environment and uh, that invoked the change of calling software apps and that has begun to be such a, a wonderful uh, way of actually integrating all the technology to be together. Uh, morning Nev and good to see you Julie watching too. Um, and so what I'm going to do without further ado is walk you around a few of these things. Um, the aim of these sessions is not to be super duper people but to be able to understand the technology and to use it more effectively for yourself. So I'm going to turn the screen around and hopefully I can close this down. Um, yeah, there we go. And put those out of the way. And let's zoom in. Now, the very first part of this I'm going to show you is to do with the uh, area that on Windows 8 that this began to change. And it used to be called Charms. And you used to be able to press the Windows logo key and also the C key um, to represent charms. Uh, and uh, there are a few things here that uh, you can see right away. At the moment we're in desktop view, which is the traditional view, uh, but if I want to change it to the, that view is particularly looks like this. Okay, so you've got your tiles, you've got your other things across the other side. Now if I wanted to change that I would click down here and you will see that uh, there are now these tiles and a lot of people um, get into this area and they're not sure what is going on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a little bit further here. Uh, let, me just do, let me just tell you what this area is up here. These are notifications that come in all the time. Your emails and uh, notes from Facebook and other things are being sent to you here. Uh, but if I zoom in a little closer, you can now see that there, there is uh, all of these kinds of different tile ideas that are there. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the desktop from, uh, sorry, change the desktop to tablet mode. And I'll have to zoom out for that. Uh, before we do that, let me just explain uh, all settings. Well, that will take you to the area where all the settings on Windows 10 can be changed. Flight mode, that is where you turn off the Wi-Fi when you're on a plane or thereabouts. Locations, uh, that, that's uh, to switch off uh, or switch on your GPS location for the device and where you are at the moment. Now, this one is an interesting one. It's called Focus Assist. Uh, what does this mean? Well, if you're a presenter or a trainer or someone like myself who talks to people a lot of the time and I'm in the middle of a presentation and uh, all of a sudden all these uh, notifications start appearing. Oh dear. Well, this actually switches it off. And as you keep clicking it, it'll give priority to only alarms uh, and then alarms only. So there are different sections, it, it, it'll prioritise and you can have that running. Say for instance, I don't want anything other than an alarm to kick in. It would stop the messages coming in and interrupting my uh, presentation. Mobile hotspot, 
means that you can turn that on and it will share your uh, Wi-Fi connection with other people and night light uh, that reduces the screen intensity for using when at uh, night time to reduce that blue light effect that causes people to sh uh, to be very um, um, as it were um, not sleep <laughs> to put it uh, Bluetooth oh, didn't know that was not on um, I will see if I can switch it on there we go Bluetooth and that will put the Bluetooth on v VPN that um, that is also uh, a virtual private network and is unlikely to be used except from people who are working uh, for companies or particular uh, places when uh, uh, you you do that. Um, yes, Leslie, uh, I will certainly do one on art creation uh, on the on a tablet, so you get an idea of how that works. Uh, but not just now. <laughs> That'll be for future Zen. Um, project is as you might expect it connects to a projector and sends to a projector um, also connect is is how you connect to such a projector uh, and network that is uh, that's to do with um, connecting through uh, your Wi-Fi and enabling that to work to nearby sharing is sharing your Wi-Fi connection in the same way that hotspots do and one I particularly love is screen snip so uh, I'm going to zoom out now and uh, screen snip is the best thing since sliced bread. Uh, what it will do is enable you to take a, a screenshot of any area of the screen, whatever it happens to be, and that will now be saved as a uh, clip that goes on to uh, your word processing, whatever. It's a brilliant tool for actually doing help sheets and all kinds of things like that. So. Let's just move along a little bit here and uh, what we're going to do now is I'm going to switch to tablet mode. So I click down here. If you remember the desktop mode looks like this. Right? All well and good. But the tablet mode changes the entire desktop face. So let's click on tablet mode which I do through this area on the right hand side of the screen and click tablet mode. Now you don't see any particular changes at all until I click down here and you'll see the entire screen is taken over with uh, icons uh, or tiles as Windows choose to call it. Now what you'll find is there are different views of this. So for instance if I click under all apps you'll find that it, it goes alphabetically and sorts out every app on the board which is really really useful um, if you are looking for something also I find it incredibly useful I think I mentioned it on another session that if I click on A or any letter up pops all the alphabet with all the uh, options for the different programs that are there now uh, what I want to do is to go back uh, to the, the tiles on the screen here and we're, we're going to see if we can actually um, pin a new tile to the screen so we've got all apps there so click on all apps and I'm going to see if I can just pin one app to the screen that's not already there so let me have a look it's read and write at the top there so let me zoom in a little bit so you can see that more clearly. Okay, brilliant. I'll just move along a little bit there. Now, when I click my uh, right mouse button over that app, I know this is not one that uh, I've got on my tiles. So what I'm going to do is click uh, over that on the right hand side and I can pin to start. Now. You don't see that operating, but if I go back to here, you'll find that it's now put itself at the bottom. Now, one of the problems people have is that you can actually uh, have all your apps segmented in, sorry, sorted into categories which you can change. For instance, that's my music app, and I can change that. Now, this is a piece of assistive technology uh, called Read Write, 
we'll talk about assistive technology in another session but as you can see I can place it actually next to something I use a lot or I could create a separate section down here uh, which I will call name group so I just tip, type over it there and uh, if I had really long arms I would type uh, uh, assistive text so I'm just going to leave it blank at the moment as name that group so the only other thing I would say is that you can make those tiles maybe a little bit bigger uh, under here is resize and at the moment it's it's on the largest it can be if I click this you'll see it reduces really small so if you have a very busy big uh, top then you would be able to do that if you look above you'll find there's another tile there and again you can resize to make it wide large or or make it extremely small and also you can move them around so there is a degree of flexibility don't ask me how they manage to choose which is a large tile and a small tile um, that really is a little bit uh, strange isn't it to know that okay so that's just basically an introduction to tiles and to uh, the menu across on the right hand side here that uh, displays the uh, alternative menu I'm going to come back to normal desktop now and you'll see whatever changes I've made uh, are certainly reflected there you can see read and write has appeared now down there uh, to get rid of this side panel I just click over here and that uh, goes away uh, that side panel is useful if I want to make some changes to my computer and make use of those tools so I hope that was a really helpful uh, introduction I'll swing round to me now and if anybody has some questions uh, we're just coming up to the last minute please write them into the uh, corner here and uh, and uh, I'll be happy to answer them uh, there is a little bit of a lag on the internet so I'll just wait a little bit here uh, next week we're going to look at some of the accessibility features on Windows and then after that we might consider um, your point about using art on, a, on an iPad. We'll see how that goes. So if you have a question do put it into the comments area and I'll be happy to uh, answer your questions about Windows 10 and how, why it works um, that way. Um, thank you. Thank you for watching. Now there will be a watch party after this uh, which I will share as well so we go through the whole thing again um, do, don't feel you have to watch this again um, but if you do then please feel free if you've thought of a question to, to write them in on the second showing of all of this so uh, if I don't see any questions and I haven't uh, I must have answered them which is kind of amazing and what I will do now is sign off as it's now 11.15 thank you so much for watching Tune in next week to the next episode of Tech Savvy.